Now for those of you that have been around here for a while, y'all know if there's one thing that I absolutely do not like at all, and that is answering questions on lists. Like engraving, who's your top five this? Who's your top five that? Who's your top ten this? Who's your top ten? I just, I do not like it. And I usually stay far, far away from that because it's just, it's not my thing. But one thing that I do like is looking at other people's lists. I don't mind reviewing into other people's lists and seeing what their top five this and top five that are. And that's the case with Bleacher Report. Now, of course, they came out with a very unique list. Um, it is very ESPN-ish. It, no, it's actually very off-season-ish because it's the off-season. Things are moving a bit slow. Everybody just trying to make it to the draft. So ESPN, I mean, excuse me, no, Bleacher Report, they came up with this list of the top 25 players that are under the age of 25. And we're going to go through it. But before we go through it, I got to say that I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Um, thank you for supporting the way that you do because you could support and I know all of us support different people and different creators and whatnot and different just people in our lives period but it's the way that you support them that makes a big difference and just to see the positivity that uh, you all display in the comment section the love um, and I ain't talking about for me I mean like with each other and just the positive vibe and, and the uh, the positive energy man it, it it makes a big difference and I really really appreciate that from y'all uh, so thank you for that now getting into this list number 25 Saquon Barkley uh, the thigh master himself from the New York Giants self-explanatory y'all already know about him that dude is nasty uh, hopefully this year he gets healthy he can come back and not only come back but stay healthy uh, because last season it just seemed like um, not even that there were more injuries than ever, but more injuries to significant players more than ever. And that's always unfortunate. But, that, I mean, it happens every single year. But with Saquon Barkley, it's just terrible. But he's number 25. Number 24 is Frank Ragnow, a center from the Detroit Lions. So he must be an excellent blocker. I don't know anything about him, and I'm not going to act like I do. Uh, number 23, oh, Marshawn Lattimore from the New Orleans Saints. Um, wow. I, uh, I did not know that he was under the age of 25. I really didn't. He's he's good and he's he's great when he guards Mike Evans cuz he usually shut Mike Evans down you anyway. Here's word. Anyway, uh number 22, Jesse Bates from the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, hoo, 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 I like that. This was the guy that said, "Hey, if as long as we cover number 15 and number 89 for the Ravens, then we'll take care of it." And they still end up losing big time. But he, hey, he he's a great individual player. Number 21, Quinnen Williams from the New York Jets. All right pressure guy um what was he like the number two overall pick a couple years back uh but yeah he's been he's been delivering for the jets and once they get their new quarterback we'll see if things change under roberts a lot anyway number 20 brian burns edge guy from the carolina panthers he's somebody else i did not know was under the age of 25 man a lot of these players are a lot younger than i thought they were number 19 joe burrow from the Bengals. Okay, well, I mean, Joe Burrow, he did look good at times last year, um, and but he was a rookie, because I know often with Joe Burrow, uh, I, I see with him that, uh, or what I saw from him is that he played a lot of hero ball, but he was a young guy, that was his first year, so hey, it is what it is, man, he was just trying to make something happen, uh, so we'll see how he continues to do that uh, moving forward, but with this one, interesting but it does say this ranking has as much to do with what could be as what was so it's more like a future project uh, it's a mix of a future projection and uh what he's done in his rookie season too uh number 18 is raquan smith uh, inside linebacker for the chicago bears okay cool i don't seen him make a few plays here and there not too familiar with his game but all right that's cool uh number 17 tristan worse from the tampa bay buccaneers and he made an Im immediate impact for the Bucks, uh, and he helped protect uh, Mr. Tom Brady and on their way to the Super Bowl. Like, how does that guy feel? You get drafted by the Bucks, and well, Tom Brady was already signed by the Bucks by that time. But you get drafted by the Bucks, and then you you get you get the you're gonna be blocking for Tom Brady. Like, you got to have like so many different emotions running through your body. Like, oh my goodness! Like, wow. And then you block all the way for him to a Super Bowl. That's that's crazy, man. Uh, anyway, next, uh, number 16, Minka Fitzpatrick. He's nice. I remember when um, the Dolphins were getting ready to trade him. I wanted the Ravens to make that move. I really did. Um, it's, it's worked out for the Steelers, though. He's been a playmaker for Pittsburgh Steelers 
Uh, even though Hollywood got to burn him twice in one year for two different teams, that was fun. But yeah, he's he's been a playmaker for Pittsburgh Steelers, so he's been pretty good. Uh, number, every time I want to come out here, it always wants to start getting windy. It's like man, it's like it is what it is though. Anyway, number fifteen. Oh, this I would have had this guy ranked a lot higher, Justin Jefferson. I would have had him ranked like way higher than this, Justin Jefferson from the Minnesota Vikings. He man, he was amazing, man. He was amazing. I remember last year going into the draft, uh, and I tell y'all this story all the time, um, but it is around draft season, so I get reminded of it uh, all the time more recently. But I was, I fell in love with with uh, the Henry Ruggs, the Jerry Judy, and the C.D. Lamb. More so uh, Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb. But Ruggs, I, I liked him a lot too. And I was just thinking of all these, envisioning all these scenarios where the Ravens would draft one of those three. I didn't think it was, was going to happen, but I really did hope it would happen. And it didn't happen, and it kind of broke my heart. But then somebody else I, I really liked, too, was Justin Jefferson when I watched him. And one of the biggest things I liked about him uh, was his quickness and his route running. He looked very, he looked sharp, sharp. His route running was on point, and his hands were good, too. And he was really good after the catch as well. And all of that translated to the nfl boom in the first year right away it wasn't no oh he had a rookie walt no that translated right away so he has some big shoe he has his own shoes to feel uh because they he he came in right away and he set the ball high um i I love this guy love his game um and i just man He's been great. So, shout out to him. I think he should be way higher. And I don't even know who 14 through. Well, I know who number one is. But I don't even know who 14 through number two are. But I feel like Justin Jefferson, regardless, should be way higher. Anyway, next up, Devin White. Inside linebacker for the Bucks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, he's nice with it. Um, and another Super Bowl champion here. Wow. There is a B that's on the tripod right now for the camera. So, uh, I might have to take a little break and, and get rid of this thing. So shout out to uh, Devin White and shout out to that B because I tried to step on it and I missed it and it flew away. So hopefully I don't get stung in the process of making this video. Uh, next up, number 13 is A.J. Brown. This dude is a certified beast. He is a monster. Uh, the Titans, they selected Corey Davis with the number five overall pick back in 2017. Was it 17? Wait, I forgot when. But they selected Corey Davis and Corey Davis supposed to be that guy. AJ Brown comes along and he says, um, I was the number five overall pick, but I will certainly give you more production than that guy. And he certainly did. This dude is big, he is fast, he is just a monster. Um, very, very physical. He's a physical fast wide receiver, and that is a beautiful combination. He makes stuff happen. Um, he ain't afraid. He just he's nice, man. I I like AJ Brown. So this this is a good one, man. Number 12, Fred. I didn't know Fred Warner was under 20. He's under 25. Wow. Playmaker, though. Playmaker for sure. I had no idea he was under 25. Even his, his name alone, he got one of them old school names. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm Fred Warner. But say, just, his name just sounds old, but I didn't think he was under 25. That's cool, man. Good for him. Number 11, Nick Bosa. Mm. Nick Bosa had a big yikes year last year because he tore his ACL. Uh, so he missed a big chunk of the year. Um, but he, he's nice with it, man. He is a, uh, a very, very good pass rusher. Very, very consistent pass rusher. I guess when it comes to being a Bosa, Bosa's just, they just really good pass rushers, period, man. They got it in their blood. Um, so no surprise that he's on this list. Number 10, oh, Christian McCaffrey. Somebody, I think he only played like three or five games last year. Another guy that got injured. Um, Christian McCaffrey, again, offensive playmaker. He's a running back. He's a receiver. You could put him in the slot. You could have him catch passes out of the backfield. You could put him on returns. You could do so much stuff with Christian McCaffrey. He is just uh, the definition of a baller, a straight-up baller. And not everybody is like that. Some, some people... Oh. Not everybody is like that. Some people are like that at their certain positions, but there's some people that can just do everything. And Christian McCaffrey, uh, he's definitely one of those. Oh, number nine, Orlando Brown Jr. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, what more needs to be said, man? This guy, uh, he came in. He should have been starting from jump his rookie season, but it took the Ravens a little while. Um, but he's been starting ever since his rookie season, since like midway through his rookie season. And, hey, he's been doing his thing. Um, he played on the right tackle for the majority of his career. Obviously, last year with Ronnie Stanley going down, they switched him over to the left side. Uh, and he did his thing over there. 
Um, and so, and he's got two Pro Bowls, and I, I guess Bleacher Report is trying to help the Ravens sort of boost up his value uh, as a player. But this is an, a good reminder of his value as a player, and when the Ravens with them trading him in the near future because he is so young. He's young, and he's experienced now on both sides, and he's been very, very healthy too. So his value is through the roof. Thanks, by the way, Bleacher Report. We appreciate you. Number eight. Oh, <laughs> another Raven guy. What a coincidence. Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey. Oh, now I see two bees out here. Well, those are actually wasps. Okay, I'm going to be watching my legs now. Extra close. But Marlon Humphrey. Um, he comes in at number eight. And we know Mar about Marlon Humphrey. Now, one thing with about, about him. He, um... I think he was in second place for giving up the most tar or the most uh, targeted cornerback uh, last year. I forgot who was in first, but I believe Marlon was in second for either the most targeted or giving up the most catches. I forgot what it was, but um, Marlon Humphrey he is a playmaker, and hopefully for the Ravens' sake, for Marlon Humphrey's sake, he can get back to playing outside corner rather than slot corner because slot corner that's not his position. He only gets thrown there, and he still does his thing there, but he's better outside corner. Um, but he, because of Tavon Young, because of Tavon Young's uh, injury problems, Marlon Humphrey ends up having to take his spot. Uh, and the Ravens still have Jimmy Smith and Marcus Peters to be the outside guys. And um, so hopefully Tavon Young will be healthy this year. So Marlon Humphrey can really, uh, I think he'll be much better um, on the outside than the inside. Because, again, that's where he belongs. He's the outside corner. Uh, but nice to see him on this list. <laughs> oh, number seven. <laughs> Chase Young, Chase Young. Oh, I was disappointed, especially as a Ravens fan, uh, when we played the Washington football team last year and Chase Young was hurt, especially because Chase Young talked about how he was looking forward to sacking Lamar Jackson. That's the They asked him, who's, who's the guy that you want to get a sack on the most? And he said, it's Lamar Jackson. Um, so I was looking forward to seeing just that, that Washington football team pass rush with Chase, uh, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, um, what is his name? Leonidas? Ah, I forgot what his name is. Uh, and there's another guy that I'm forgetting. Oh, Ryan Kerrigan. He was on there too. Uh, so that would have been nice. But Chase Young did his thing last year. I, I think, um, I actually do think Patrick Queen probably should have got rookie of the year. Um, because when you look at the numbers, I think with Chase Young, uh, it, I, you just knew he was going to get rookie of the year. And if Joe Burrow would have finished the season, he was going to get rookie of the year, even though Justin Herbert, I think he really, des he really deserved it. But um, you just, I think they, they gave both of those guys, uh, well, more so Chase Young, I think they gave him Rookie of the Year more so because he, because of his status, like, oh, he was the number two overall pick, and I just, um, I, I, I thought it, it should have went somewhere else. But anyway, not a big deal. Uh, number six, Justin, oh, Justin Herbert. Just was talking about Justin Herbert, and boom, he pops up on the list. So I, I really, really like Justin Herbert a lot. A lot, man. This dude, he is going to be really, really good, man. Like, really, really good. Um, he already got weapons. They just need to build up their offensive line. Hey, maybe Orlando Brown Jr. to the charge, but he is really, really good. I, I love his game. I love the way he plays. Um, he can do it all. Every single throw. He got the big arm. He could throw off his back foot. He could throw on the move. He, he is going to be nice. Love Justin Herbert. Love him. Next up. Oh, ho, 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 ho. number five is DK Metcalf. Straight beast, man. Beast. He is like a uh, bigger, faster A.J. Brown. And that's not a diss to A.J. Brown because A.J. Brown is big and he's fast. But DK Metcalf is like a bigger, faster version of him. Phys phys physical guy uh, He had some knocks on him coming out of uh, college A lot of people thought he looked a little bit stiff and whatnot, But he has shut all of that down And he has done his thing at a very, very high level Shout out to DK Metcalf and the Seahawks for making that move to draft him Ooh, next up, Jair Alexander at number four I love Jair Alexander I always mess with my guy, uh, KDG, who's a Packers fan um, and I always talk to him about Jair Alexander coming to the Ravens uh, and not re-signing with the uh, Packs when his contract is up. I know it's not going to happen, but I just like messing with him. Jair Alexander, definition of lockdown. He, he is a lockdown corner. So him being where he is on this list, I'm with it. And I see that the bird, they agree as well. Next up, 
Kyler Murray. Oh, okay. Number three, Kyler Murray. All right. Kyler Murray is nice. I mean, I wouldn't think he would be at number three on this list. But, um, oh, I guess the bird, they, they, they agree with him being at number three. But it's all good. But I didn't think, I wouldn't think he would be that high. But it's good. I mean, the, the, the Cardinals are certainly putting him in a position to where they're going to be like, they need to fix that offensive line, though. But they're putting him, him in a position to where they're like, okay, Kyler, we're going to keep providing for you. The, I love how they're gonna, they're giving him, like, no excuse but to succeed. Because he had Larry Fitz and DeAndre Hopkins and Christian Kirk and Isabella last year. Now, this year, Larry Fitzgerald is in limbo. But the Cardinals were like, we're not waiting on you. They went and signed A.J. Green. They still have D-Hop. They still have Kirk. They still have Isabella. They st like, they still providing for him, man. So that's a beautiful thing. Number two, Josh Allen. Okay, I'm not mad at this one at all. Josh Allen is nice. And it get with him. Same thing as Kyler Murray. The Bills... And I, I listened to a, a podcast with that had Brandon Bean on there, the Bills GM, the Huddle and Flow podcast. Listen to it if you get a chance to. And it's with Steve Weish. Um, but they were interviewing Brandon Bean, and they were like, man. Brandon Bean was talking about how with Josh Allen, um, the year that they had the, when they first signed John Brown and Cole Beasley, those were Josh Allen's top targets. But he said they wanted to trade for Emmanuel Sanders, and they wanted to trade for, uh, for Stephon Diggs. But it just it didn't happen. Um, they say, he said those are two guys that they really liked. And, and this was even after having John Brown and Nicole Beasley. But then after that season passed, Brandon Bean was like, you know what? That's not enough. That's not enough. Those two guys, like, we need more. We just we really need more. So he went and he, he hit up the Vikings about Stephon Diggs. But it was like, oh, no, they're not really doing anything right now. Then he said, he said that he got worried about Stephon Diggs tweeting something. And he said, well, Stephon Diggs tweeted that led him to believe that, okay, maybe this relationship ain't so pretty now. And then he said he went out and got him. I was like, man. So they really taking care of Josh Allen. They, then they drafted Gabe Davis, who was really nice too. And they just really provided Josh Allen weapons. And you saw his game go from here to there. Just like that with, with having that guy at wide receiver. So I love how the Bills really provided for Josh Allen. They really just invested in their quarterback. And that leads us to number one which is Mr. Lamar Jackson. Um, and I'm hoping that the Ravens, they, they follow suit and really invest like crazy in Lamar Jackson because it's coming up to where they're going to be, they're going to pick up the fifth year option any day now. They have until May 3rd to do it. So expect that announcement literally any day. You know, Ravens, a lot of times when it comes to these deadline announcements, they like wait until like the last minute to announce stuff. But that's cool. Uh, but I, I expect them to any day now. Any day um, but probably closer, a lot closer to May 3rd. Uh, but Lamar Jackson, he has just been amazing. Um, everything Ravens goes through him. Uh, everything Ravens goes by him. Um, everything Ravens is just, it's him. It's Lamar all day. Um, but now I would just love to see where they really invest in him and really provide him weapons and options and, and, and more receivers and higher quality of offensive line. They just really go all in for Lamar Jackson. So because he, man, he does so much for the team. He spoils the Ravens, spoils them. So it's Ravens' turn to really spoil him. Really go all in with this guy, man. Go all in like crazy. Over-invest in Lamar Jackson. Do it because it just makes too much sense. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Thank you, Bleacher Report, for this uh, very fun list. This was fun. See, I told you I like reviewing the list, but I don't like making my own. So I love y'all. appreciate y'all. And we out.